Hi, and welcome to another edition of Black Knights Weekly. On this week's show, we'll introduce you to football player Thomas Holloway and volleyball player Alicia Dotson. Rich DeMarco will also sit down and go one-on-one -on -one with volleyball head coach Alma Cavacci. But right now, here's what happened last week in Army Athletics. Friday night, the women's soccer team took on 13th-ranked Penn State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. The Nittany Lions scored the only goal of the match in the 86th minute. Senior goalie Monica Lee made a career-high 12 saves, including five on the nation's number one scorer, Maya Hayes. The rifle team had a big weekend defeating North Carolina State on Friday and Nebraska on Sunday. Kelly Buck was one of the top shooters, winning small bore in both matches. She also tied Zachary Wells for the top score in air rifle against the Huskers. Wells also was tops in air rifle against the Wolfpack. The women's basketball team started the 2011-2012 season in a big way thanks to their 70-46 win over Wagner Friday night. Molly Yardley had a game-high 16 points, including two three-pointers. Anna Simmer scored 14 points in her first career start, while Jen Hazlett added 13. On Sunday, the Black Knights welcomed Seton Hall to Crystal Arena. Army would claw back from a nine-point deficit with two minutes to play, but came up just short, falling 53-50. The game featured 18 lead changes. Hazlett led Army with 15 points, 12 of which came in the second half. Simmers continued her strong play, chipping in 13 points in her second career start. The first road contest for the Black Knights came up on Wednesday when they traveled to St. Francis. Hazlett scored a career-high 20 points as Army picked up the 59-43 win. The victory was head coach Dave McGarity's 400th of his career. Yardley added 11 points, while freshman point guard Janelle Travis scored 10 to go along with five assists. The men's basketball team also got their season started this past weekend with the All-Military Classic in Colorado Springs. The Black Knights opened with host Air Force Friday night. The Falcons broke open the game midway through the second half to pick up the win. Three Black Knights scored in double figures led by Ella Ellis with 17 points. Julian Simmons knocked down three three-pointers finishing with 16 points. Freshman Mo Williams poured in 15 in his collegiate debut. The next night, the Black Knights took on the Citadel. Army shot 60% from the field in the first half, but the Bulldogs were able to erase the halftime deficit to pick up the win. Again, Ellis paced the Black Knights with 18 points. On Wednesday night, the Black Knights returned to Crystal Arena for their home opener against Marywood. The visitors took an early 3-0 lead before the Army offense shifted into gear. The Black Knights took a commanding 27-7 lead midway through the opening half and didn't look back, defeating Marywood 95-40. Josh Herbeck had a team-high 14 points off the bench. Freshman Jalen Harris made his first career start and scored 11 points, while Ellis chipped in 10. Freshman Whit Thornton hauled in 14 rebounds, while classmate Maxwell Lennox had 7 points, 6 boards, 4 assists, and 3 steals. Down at Gillis Fieldhouse, it was the final weekend of the regular season for the volleyball team, starting with Colgate Friday night. The match saw 24 ties and 11 lead changes as the Black Knights pulled out the exciting 3-2 win. Ariana Mankus led Army with 21 kills, while Margot Jarka recorded 16. Libero DJ Fee had a career-high 27 digs, while Mary Vaquera reached the 50-assist plateau for the eighth time, finishing with 56. Saturday afternoon was Senior Day as the Black Knights honored seniors Rachel Willis and Fabiola Castro before their match with Bucknell. The two seniors made their last home match one to remember, sweeping the Bison three sets to none. Again, it would be Mankus and Jarka leading the attack, each totaling 12 kills. Playing without Vaquero, Alicia Dotson and Lauren Wood kept the offense rolling with 28 and 12 assists, respectively. Castro finished with 15 digs in her final home match, with Willis adding eight kills and three total blocks. The hockey team continued conference play with a game at Sacred Heart Friday night. Zach Zaremba scored 14 minutes into the second period to give Army the lead. On a Black Knight power play in the third period, Maurice Alvarez tallied his first collegiate goal thanks to assists from his older brother Marcel and Andy Starshevsky. The Pioneers made it a 2-1 game later in the period and pulled their goalie with 90 seconds to play, but Ryan Leeds stood strong in the goal to give the Black Knights their first win of the season. Saturday night, the Black Knights returned to Tate Rink for their showdown with Bentley. Bryant Scarta tied the game at one with a power play goal in the first period, but the visiting Falcons would go home with the win. Leeds made 34 saves for the Black Knights. Both the men's and women's cross-country teams finished their seasons at the NCAA Northeast Regional Championships on Saturday. Both teams finished 16th. 
senior Barrett Lahardy had the fastest time on the men's side, finishing 58th out of 436. Senior captain Dan Nix finished 94th, with classmate Mike Mitchell finishing one spot back in 95th. Sophomore Liz O'Donnell finished with the top time on the women's side, crossing the line 81st out of a field of 243. Senior captain Chelsea Prawl finished 85th, while Marcy Nort was 98th. Down in the Bronx, the football team played Rutgers in the first game of the Army at Yankee Stadium series. The Scarlet Knights scored two late touchdowns to pull out the win. Freshman fullback Larry Dixon rumbled for a career-high 93 yards on the ground and a score. Classmate Angel Santiago had 149 total yards of offense in the quarterback's first career start. Jordan Tom led the way for the wrestling team as the Black Knights finished fourth at the Oklahoma Gold Classic. After pinning his first two opponents, the junior placed runner-up at 133 pounds. The Black Knights also had three third-place finishes, with Jimmy Rafferty at 157 pounds, Daniel Young at 149, and Colin Whitmire at 174. After the break, Rich DeMarco goes one-on-one -on -one with volleyball head coach Alma Kavachi. That's next. This is Scott Swanson, Director of Strength Conditioning, with our Surgex Training Tip of the Week. These are some fresh off the field workout drills that you can utilize in your daily training program and it helps take your fitness routine up a notch to train like an athlete. Sports are a great way to round out your workout program. And in real life, just like sports, you move in multiple directions. Speed and agility drills can help you move better in your daily life. Rich DeMarco here with Army Volleyball Coach Alma Cavacci as the Black Knights head into a big weekend. The Patriot League Championship at Bender Arena at American University. Black Knights the number two seed. They'll be in action on Saturday against Lehigh with the championship coming up on Sunday against the winner of American and Colgate, the number four seed. So Alma, thanks for a couple of minutes. Have to be excited. Patriot League Championship weekend. We're very excited. It is a big week, but again, we're focusing on the process. And now the se that season's over. Now we're into the postseason. Now we're going to approach this Lehigh match just like we've approached every other match. And during the season, we've been prepared for this, and we've talked to the team also. Is every game, every match that we've played on that Monday, we've watched video, film, analysis to actually make sure that we show win or lose, we show how we can get better. And it wasn't about coaching on the moment, but it was coaching for this. Time. And I think the team is ready, they're prepared, and they are working really hard uh, for this weekend. Alma, what are some of the challenges heading to, not necessarily a neutral site, it'll be one on Saturday, yeah. America's home site, but uh, to play a tournament against the three other best teams in the conference? It is a challenge, and it's sport. Uh, you have to play your game, and you have to get there, you have to go there prepared physically, but also mentally. And I think. Um, the, going into that postseason tournament, it is a challenge of being an American, but um, I think if we just focus on uh, pieces of the game and focusing on the process and the skill and what we do best, worry about our side, I think we're going to be okay. Tell me a little bit about your opponent coming up on Saturday, Lehigh, a team which you defeated twice this year. Always a uh... Sometimes interesting, the third time teams play. Give us the scouting report. Um, yeah, they're very athletic. Uh, they have, they are very well coached by my former coach at Temple, now Bob Bertucci there. They're technically great this season. So you can see that improvement, and they're continuing improving. Their hitting is getting much better. Their ball control is much better. Also, what um, what I think it's it's going to be important for us is their middles. Their middles are very good. Number one of their one of their middles became an all team conference and a player and a Patriot League uh, Player of the Week twice this past uh, season. So being able to stop their attack, I think it's going to be important for us. But uh, we're going to focus on we're going to focus on our process, focusing on our skills, and uh, and then we'll be fine. Alma, you still have several players from the team which won the Patriot League Championship two years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, for them, a chance they they wanted as younger players. Now now they're veterans. Maybe a chance to to win another conference title. I can't speak highly enough of uh, Fabiola Castro and uh, Rachel Willis, their co-captains. Co they have done a tremendous job this season. They have established that culture, that winning culture, and that confidence culture that we have now. is. Uh, and they've been talking about it. Of course, they want another ring. They want another championship. Um, so they're, they're, they're focused on the process and forgetting about the outcome. And um, proud of those girls. They should they were confident. They should have that, I guess, that um, confidence in the back that they actually did it before. So we're very excited to go there and play Lehigh first. Well, Alma, thanks for a couple of minutes. Best of luck this Saturday and Sunday at the Patriot League Championships in Washington, D.C. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it.
That's Army Volleyball Coach Alma Kavachi. The Black Knights, the number two seed in the 2011 Patriot League Volleyball Tournament in Washington, D.C. on Saturday and Sunday. Black Knights have number three seed Lehigh in the semifinals. And then if they win, either top seed American or fourth seed Colgate on Sunday for the Patriot League Championship. We'll have more Black Knights Weekly coming up in just a moment. Army hockey and basketball tickets are on sale now. West Point's Hollander Center is the place to be for all the action on the ice and hardwood. Season and individual game tickets are on sale now. Call 877-TIX-ARMY or go online at GoArmySports.com. You can also ask about group and youth team opportunities. That's Army hockey and basketball. Call 877-TIX-ARMY or log on to GoArmySports.com. Army hockey and basketball. It's more than just a game at West Point. Let's keep the volleyball theme going, shall we? For one player this year, it's been about making an impact in more ways than one, whether it's been serving or setting. It's just a routine, just same thing every time when you go back to the line. Before last week's regular season finale against Bucknell, Alicia Dotson was mainly known as a serving specialist. However, the junior was called on to start at setter against the Bison and dished out 28 assists in the 3-0 sweep. She also continued her strong play from the service line, notching a career high four aces. It was a great time. I mean, the seniors look great for their senior night, and everyone just came together really well. I just sat in practice um, against the other team and everything, so it wasn't that much of a change, but it's more of a surprise than anything. The Colorado native has 14 aces this season and is riding a streak of seven matches with at least one. Head coach Alma Cavacci says Dotson's serving has been one of the many bright spots this season. She gets in there and she's so calm, so poised and uh, displays this uh, tremendous confidence that we love watching her serve and she's got this uh, kind of a mean stare at the opponent and when we see that it takes a minute, takes a, not a minute, but it takes a couple of seconds or so and she aces and we love it. The team just uh, fires up when she, she serves like that so we're very excited about Alicia's uh, contribution so far. As the Black Knights prepare for this weekend's Patriot League tournament, Dotson's serving prowess will be called upon once again. She says her confidence serving builds with each point scored. I mean, it's really something we've been focusing as a team a lot is um, like one ball at a time, one point at a time. So I don't really think as much about like the string of serves, but like the single point. As you heard earlier in the show, the Black Knights take on Lehigh in the second semifinal on Saturday. We'll have more Black Knights Weekly right after this. Now you can follow West Point and Army Athletics through social media like never before. On Facebook, West Point USMA and Army Black Knights. On Twitter, at West Point News and Army Athletics. And on YouTube, the West Point Channel and Army Athletics. Social media, your way to stay connected to West Point and Army Athletics anywhere at any time. This season, the Army football team has had a next man up approach. Rich DeMarco has more on one player who's answered the call. The Army football team's most improved player this year may be free safety Thomas Holloway. The sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama, has worked his way into the starting lineup and has proven to be a playmaker in the Army secondary. With 61 tackles, good for second on the team to go along with a fumble recovery and interception. Surely it's been a long road for Holloway, who started as a walk-on and at one time was seventh string. I tried out. They knew who I was. Uh, I don't want to say it's more of a preferred walk-on, but I definitely wasn't a, a scholarship athlete here. You know, I came in, I got in regularly, and I tried out. They knew who I was, and they put me in a football platoon during Beast Barracks, and they allowed me the opportunity to try out, and everything worked out during the tryouts, and I was really fortunate to be able to joined the team with fall training camp leading up to my freshman year and started off just as a JV player on the B squad and I just you know didn't lose any hope just tried to keep the faith and I kept working as hard as I possibly could and uh, luckily at the end of last year they traveled me for a few games and they took me to the bowl game with them and they also gave me some more opportunities to work in with some higher level guys during spring ball and during fall training camp, and that's what it's led me to thus far, and I've been really, really fortunate. And Holloway, who made his collegiate debut in that Armed Forces Bowl victory over SMU, says his opportunities this year definitely have had an effect on how he feels about himself as a player. I feel like it's a, it's a huge progression in terms of confidence, because, you know, being, being young and everything like that, relatively inexperienced on the collegiate level, it's been kind of a challenge just because I don't know what to expect myself. I know that a lot of things are expected of me just because of the stage that we're playing at. And I think that 
me just playing a little bit more each week and, and competing with some guys is not only develops me further as far as being more confident and more comfortable with what I'm doing on the field, but it also helps me work well with the other people on and off the field because I've grown with the brothers on the team. I've learned to see how they play, you know, grown more with their attitudes and you know the, the brotherhood like we always talk about has just increased a ton and I feel like I'm more of a part of that than I used to be. And that production on the field isn't lost on head coach Rich Ellerson, who says Holloway, who led Army with 14 tackles and had an interception last week against Rutgers, has separated himself at the free safety position. He's getting more and more comfortable in that, in that arena. Uh, it's a fast game back there, and you've got to, and I don't care how fast and athletic you are as a free safety, if you can't anticipate, if your eyes aren't a little bit faster than your feet, you're, you're going to always be a little bit late. And he's catching up. He's, he's finding himself uh, in the middle of a bunch of plays. He's a good tackler. He's not a, again, he's a, he's a, he's a direct sophomore. So he's a, he should be a, he's a redshirt freshman anywhere else in the world. And uh, he's, um, we're getting some really solid play out of him. And when looking back on how far he's come, the word that comes to mind for Holloway is thankful. It's been a great experience, you know, I just, I just thank God every day for the wonderful experience that I've, I've had and the opportunities that the coaches and my teammates have given me. If I looked back a year prior to this moment, I never would have thought that I'd be anywhere close to this. And looking back even further into the past, you know, it seems outrageous. You know, I never, never would have expected it in a million years. And just every day I wake up, I'm just really happy that I could be Army football player and get to see the time on the field that I have been. And, I'm, you know, no matter how many mistakes I play, I make or how many good plays I make, you know, every time anything happens, I'm just grateful to go back out there on the next play and, and just make the school proud. Truly thankful for the opportunity and making the most of it. Army Free Safety, Thomas Holloway. For Black Knights Weekly, I'm Rich DeMarco. After this short break, it's the weekend preview. We'll be right back. Join the Army A Club today and support cadet athletes 12 months a year. Members of the A-Club receive priority consideration for parking, seat locations, pre-game hospitality, as well as Army-Navy tickets. But the benefits don't stop there. The A-Club also gives members access to special receptions and events throughout the year. To join, visit the A-Club link at GoArmySports.com or call 845-938-2322. The Army A-Club, supporting cadet athletes. We've already heard from volleyball head coach Alma Cavacci about this weekend's Patriot League tournament. Here's what else is going on on the fields of friendly strife this weekend. After a week off, the swimming and diving teams are back in action. The diving team starts things off with the two-day Galbraith Invitational. The Army women will travel to CW Post with the men traveling to Columbia. Head coach Mickey Wender likes the progress his team has made with the extra time to prepare. Good two weeks. We really peaked everything, I, I, I'd say... It's as good a, a, a training cycle as we've seen, certainly out of these kids in, 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 a, in a very long time. We got a lot of great work done. We kind of used these last two weeks to, to peak the training in each of our energy systems. And um, we're going to rest a little bit for the Zippy invite and Navy and, and see where we're at. But they're, they're tired. They responded well to it. It was a challenging couple weeks, but I think they're in, in a real good place. Mentally, um, really solid. I love what this team brings, the energy, the enthusiasm every week. Physically, you know, you're going to have your ups and downs. Or there's going to be uh, some bumps along the way, and we've certainly had a few of those, but, but they're responding well, and um, I think we're in a good spot. It's another split weekend for the hockey team as they travel to AIC Friday and host Brown on Saturday. Head coach Brian Riley says there is one goal that carries throughout each weekend. We have a saying here, if, if, if you can win the first one, you have a good good weekend, but uh, you want to make it a great weekend. Uh, last weekend we weren't able to do that, but as you step back and, and look back, um, if you can come, come away with points every weekend, uh, you know what, you'll be in pretty good shape uh, come the end of the year. Two top teams will travel to West Point to take on the rifle team. The Black Knights host TCU and Murray State Saturday morning. Head coach Major Ron Wigger says his team is excited for this pair of matches. We've got great competition coming in with TCU and Murray State, uh, both uh, traditional powers in our sport. Um, in fact, TCU is ranked number one in the country right now uh, on the uh, highest average, uh, you know, leading into the NCAA qualification. 
So, heck of a challenge, but um, you know, I'm hoping our our folks it, it's a chance for them to respond. And normally, we, we we respond well when it's high level competition. It's a road trip to Philadelphia for the football team when they face Temple on Saturday. Head coach Rich Ellerson says he's proud of his team's leadership. As an entity, you know, the Army football team is in good hands with our senior leadership and especially those captains. They've they've kept us together, you know, because again, a lesser group of guys, uh, you know, faced with the kind of adversity and the challenges that we've had would have given in to their more baser instincts and these guys haven't let that happen. We've stayed together, we've been uh, we've been resilient, we continue to fight back and, and uh, as I say, we're, we're doing so many things well enough to be successful uh, in spite of our relative immaturity physically, or, you know, some of the uh, opponents we're played, we're, we're giving ourselves a great chance. So I, I think that's, that speaks volumes of the, it, it, we shouldn't be surprised that we have some great character and some great leadership on an Army football team. That, that should be the standard, that sh and, and, and these guys do not disappoint in any meaningful way. Head coach Dave McGarity will look for a win 4-0-1 Saturday as the women's basketball team takes on Fairleigh Dickinson. The six-year head coach says FDU will provide another early season test. They've got two of the best guards in the Northeast Conference uh, in Lowry and Pankey. They are explosive in transition, very dangerous, and they present a lot of challenges for us. Uh, and we, we, we've really struggled with that these first couple games with defensive transition recovery, getting out and stopping the ball. And, and this is a team that's going to take it uh, right at you every chance they get. A big percentage of their scoring is coming out of transition. The men's basketball team will play their third road game this season when they travel to Central Connecticut State. Head coach Zach Spiker says his squad is looking forward to taking on the Blue Devils. They're a really good team. They're a very well coached team. They're a veteran team. Uh, they've got a lot of veteran players. We've got a lot of young players. It's going to be a terrific challenge, terrific opportunity to uh, take our program on the road and, and see what we can and make happen. But uh, we're excited about the opportunity and we'll be ready to play. The wrestling team will compete in the Body Bar Invitational held in Ithaca, New York. Here's head coach Joe Heskett on his second year at West Point. Well, it's a constant learning curve, but, but at the end of the day, uh, it's about sustaining a culture and uh, continuing to build the mind for excellence. Uh, there is no excuse, especially for this team, not to walk off that mat saying, I, try, I tried my hardest, period, and I did my best. And uh, that's what we're looking for. And, and last year, uh, it was building that more. And uh, trust me, there's still a building process going, but at the end of the day, the expectations from this team, they understand where we're coming from as a staff, and uh, they understand the, the uh, expectations of excellence that we have from an effort standpoint alone. And that'll put a wrap on this week's show. From everyone here at Black Knights Weekly, have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. We'll see you in two weeks. So long, everybody.